talk about we talk about the uh, the moving charge. Hold on. A moving charge generates magnetic field, and also a current could also generate magnetic field. Current or a moving charge can generate a magnetic field right here. And if we have a moving charge moving this way, then uh, in the space, it generates a circular magnetic field. Something like this. It's a B. And if we have a current goes upward, then it will generate a circular magnetic field also surrounding the current and perpendicular to the surface. Um, okay, and we know for the moving charge, the magnetic field has a relation with the value of charge, speed of the moving charge, and the distance. And for the current, the magnetic field and is also proportional to the current and one over distance. So this is uh, and the magnetic field created by moving charge and current. Uh, we discover uh, we discussed this and last week. And we have another question: Can we reverse this process? That means if we have current, we have current, then we will have magnetic field. Then we want to reverse this process. If we have magnetic field, can we create current? This is um, a simple question but the answer is not easy because we can do experiment and uh, the experiment show that this process is impossible. So I show you how we do experiment. We can put a magnet, a small magnet, and we have south pole and the north pole and the magnetic curve start from the north pole and to the south pole. This is a magnetic field. Okay. This is a magnet, and we put a circuit. We put a circuit here. This is a circuit loop, and we have wire, and we connect with a, a current meter. This is a current meter. If there's a current inside the circuit, then the current meter will tell us. Okay, then we just put everything on the table, then wait and to see if we have uh, the current in the circuit. And the answer, the result is upset and nobody found the current. There's no current. in the circuit. If everything on the table is stationary, okay, this is uh, uh, how people do the experiment and there will be some reason, then they have brainstorm and they said, Maybe the current meter is not accurate or it's not precise, and they try to increase the uh, precision of the um, current meter. And the second one, they want to and change it, increase the magnetic field of the magnet. So to use a strong magnet or a greater magnet. 
So they think that the magnets they use is too small, then they, they can put as many magnets as they can. But the result is still mm -hmm. opposite, and there's no current in the loop. So one day, um, a physicist named Freddie, he has done an experiment by accident. So there is a magnet, and there is a loop. And on the loop, there is a switch. So there is a switch. And he used a very big magnet, so, and a very precise current meter. And he closed the switch. And try to find the current, but there's no current. So at the beginning, there's no current. But um, when he opened the switch, at this moment, he finds the current. The find the current meter um, has some change when he opened the switch. But after he opened and the current meter go back to the uh, initial position. So he said that um, at the moment when he opened the switch or closed the switch, he saw the current. But if the, uh, the circuit keep closed or keep open, there's no current. So if the switch it keeps open or close, no current. But when the switch is open or close, at such moment, there is, there is current at an instant. Okay, so he got a, a, a conclusion. The conclusion is that the current only, uh, the current is only generated at something change. Okay, so if there's something change, If there's something change, then the current is created. If everything keeps stationary, there's no current. Okay, from this hint, um, there is an experiment. I can show you um, the video. The video. So you can see. Hmm. This is a demonstration of Faraday's law of induction. I hope you remember this demonstration because it's a very important one in the history of physics. What it demonstrates is that a changing magnetic flux through a coil of wire produces an EMF, namely a voltage, in that coil of wire and a current in the coil of wire. This is not something that's, uh, that people come across every day, but it's a basic principle behind uh, generators, the alternator in your car, um, etc. So we can generate electricity by changing the magnetic flux, the amount of magnetic field that penetrates a coil. So what I have here are three separate coils of wire. One with uh, very few windings, one with about double the number of windings, and one with approximately quadruple the original number of windings of wire in this coil. I also have a, and this is a galvanometer, it just measures the amount of current in the wire, or in the coil. I also have a magnet, uh, north pole and south pole. I'm gonna be inserting the magnet into each of these three coils of wire and we'll be watching the, the black needle here in order to, um, 
to demonstrate the presence of a current in these, in these wire loops. So starting with the small one, if I move the magnet into the wire loop, you saw that as the magnet was moving into the wire loop, the needle bumped up positive. But now the needle isn't moving at all. This is a very important bit of Faraday's law. There's only a current when there's a change in the magnetic flux. It doesn't care how much magnetic flux there is through the coil. Right now there's a lock. All that magnetic field is through the, 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 uh, the loop. What matters is when it's changing. So now I'm going to pull the magnet out of the coil. And what you see is that while the magnet was leaving the coil of wire, the current was negative. So we get an opposite effect. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about that. The, the effect is proportional to the number of windings in the loop of wire. So we should see a bigger effect through this loop and uh, finally for the, the third loop. So we definitely saw uh, a bigger current went all the way to the maximum and minimum and then I think we'll we actually pegged out here uh, it went beyond the maximum this uh, galvanometer will measure but again a changing magnetic flux in a loop of wire causes a current in the wire and um, that's Faraday's law of induction Okay, so let's go back to the to here, and you will find that just now we have a video to show how the current is generated by moving the magnet. So there is a very important conclusion: the current is generated by something change. Hold on here, something change, and at the beginning people don't know what the something is, but um, they have an idea something should be changed, then the current is generated. So then we can uh, go back to the experiment to see what happened. There is um, a sort of the coil, we call this solenoid, and the solenoid is connected with uh, the current meter, and we have a magnet here. The magnet can generate magnetic field, I use another color, and you will find that this is uh, uh, the magnetic field curve. And when we move the magnet and insert the magnet into the solenoid, so it move in this way. If it move in this way, you will find that the magnetic field inside the solenoid increase, because when the North Pole approach to the solenoid the magnetic field increase. Then after the magnetic field increase, we see the current. So I tell you the, uh, the first result. The I is generated when the magnetic field increase or, or magnetic field change. And we can take the magnet out of the solenoid and we still see the, the current. Okay, this is the first experiment. The second experiment is we don't change the magnetic field, but we change the, um, the surface area of the circuit. So the experiment could be like this. We have a current meter connected with a circuit. The circuit is made by uh, a wire and this wire, a conductor, but this circuit is open. At the beginning, there's no current. And inside of the circuit, we have magnetic field. Magnetic field, suppose they point into the page. And we put another conductor on the wire. So this is a conductor. So when there's a conductor, then this circuit is closed. Okay, then we move the conductor. 
the conductor is moving rightwards, and the magnetic field we keep is stationary, so B doesn't change. But the conductor rod uh, moving to the right. Then in this case, what change in the um, in this experiment? The area of the magnetic field inside the circuit change. So when the rod is at here, the magnetic field area inside the circuit is zero. Right? There's no magnetic field inside the circuit. But when this conductor rod uh, moves to this end, then the magnetic field area inside the circuit will become the this length multiplied by this length. That will be length square. That's the area. And when this conductor rod is moving, we do see the current inside the current meter. So uh, if there is a needle in the current meter, then the needle will change the direction. Then it demonstrates there's a current inside the circuit. So that means we have another conclusion that if the B is a constant, we can still generate current by changing the area of the magnetic field inside the circuit. So if the area change, then induce the current. Okay, um, now we have magnetic field change and we have the area change. So how do we quantify the change? So in the, in the physics, we know something change will induce current. But how do we quantify change? And we want to write an equation to represent the change. So in the change, um, we have derivative in the math um, to quantify the change. So if something change, then we can do the derivative of something over time. Then this is how we define the change. So if uh, the current change, then we have di dt is the change of the change rate of the current. If the magnetic field change, then we have change rate of the magnetic field. Okay. So in in the um, Induction, we have magnetic field change and also the surface area change. So we can multiply the magnetic field and the surface area inside uh, the bracket. Then we have a change of change rate of magnetic field and area. And you can find that we know the electric field flux is defined as electric field times the area. And the same thing, we have magnetic field times by the uh, area. So we define B times A as the flux of the magnetic field, so the magnetic flux. And we can use uh, phi to represent the flux or sometimes they use psi, depends on your preference. So um, in this case, we have the current is proportional to the change rate of the magnetic flux. So we have this one over dt. Right. So current is proportional to the change rate of magnetic flux. This is called Friday's law. Friday's law. And this is a very big discovery at that moment. And when and he summarized this relation, this is the first time that pe people can generate the current. So if people can generate the current, they can invent an electric uh, generator then if we have electric generator, we can generate electricity and we can use electricity to um, 
ignite uh, the bomb or use electricity to um, drive the, the motor. So this is a very big and important discovery at that time. Okay, so the next thing is we have this relation and we want to write this relation into equation. So um, we use uh, equal sign to equivalent to this two um, parameter. So current is equal to a constant times the change of magnetic flux. Okay, so um, the G is a constant. We call this constant as conductance. And sometimes we use um, the reverse conductance in the equation. So we can also write this equation as um, the reverse of the conductance. The same thing, we have the change rate of the magnetic flux, but for the constant, if we use a number multiplied in front of the change rate, then we call this conductance. If we use one over something um, to represent the, uh, the constant, we call the R as resistance. So in this case, we can formulate this relation, the G conductance is one over resistance. And uh, most of the time we use a second equation. This is what we usually use. So we use the change of magnetic flux divided by the resistance, then we get the current. Okay. Then let's check the unit of this equation. Um, what's the unit of this one? And this is not obvious, so we can do some um, derivation then to demonstrate how this change uh, magnetic flux is important. So on the left, we have Tesla. This is a unit of the magnetic field times the area, the unit is meter square, okay, and over the time, time is second. Okay, then let's simplify this relation. We know the Tesla could be um, replaced by the force over the length and the current because we have the magnetic force equal to the current times the length times the magnetic field. This is a magnetic force on the current. So force has a unit of Newton, current has a unit of ampere, length has a unit of meter, magnetic field has a unit of the Tesla. So Tesla could be solved by using Newton over ampere and meter. Okay, so we replace um, the Tesla by plugging this formula. So we have Newton meter square over ampere meter and second. And we have meter square on the denominator uh, on the numerator and meter on the denominator. So we erase one meter. Okay. Then you will find that Newton times meter is zero. That's the energy, okay? The energy is on the, uh, on the numerator. And what's the ampere times the second? We know the charge over the time is current. This is the definition of the current. Um, moving charge over the time is a current. So ampere times the second is the unit of the charge. That's coulomb. Okay. And what's the gel over coulomb? We have the potential energy equal to the charge times the change of the potential, the potential difference. So if we use energy over the charge, that's the potential energy, uh, that's the electric potential. So the unit is volt. Okay, so that means 
the change of magnetic field flux is electric potential, which is very important. So we call this delta V is equivalent to the change of magnetic flux over time. And this is the change rate of magnetic flux is equal to the potential difference potential difference the potential difference has another name we call the voltage the voltage is from the name of battery if you have a battery positive end, negative end, then the voltage is going to give uh, the energy to the, to the lamp. If we have a lamp, you know, we have a voltage here. And the same thing, if we have electric generator, for example, this is the electric generator, this box is electric generator, then the current meter, you can treat the current meter as a, a lamp, so the uh, electricity generator provide a voltage and the voltage give the current to the lamp. The same idea, the voltage actually is a potential difference uh, across uh, uh, the battery. And in the electricity generator, the battery is the change of the magnetic flux. Okay. And also we have another name to the potential difference we call the EMF. What does this mean? The electric, electromagnetic force. Okay, here I use a quote uh, to include the force. This is not a, a real force because the force has a unit of Newton, but the unit of the EMF is voltage. Right? The voltage, not a Newton. So this is not a real force but the name is called the electromagnetic force. This force and help to drive, uh, to drive the electron, the charge from the negative side to the positive side. So this is called EMF. So this is just a name. And usually I prefer to call this as a potential difference, okay? So we have the current equal to the change of magnetic flux over time, over the resistance. Then we can rewrite this formula. We get the potential difference over the resistance. Okay. Um, do you have any question? Then if not, let's go back to uh, another video. I have another video to show uh, the electric force. Here. So this is the second video. And this video just to demonstrate how they generate the electric force and the current inside a solenoid. This video is made by the UPenn. We've got a ring which consists of many turn This ring is um, solenoid. There are many coil of loops. is moved, the magnetic field within the coil of wire changes. And it is this changing magnetism that induces electricity. This is what Michael Faraday discovered. And notice that by moving the magnet in different directions, we produce electricity in either the forward or the backward direction. We can illustrate this with a bar magnet. 
the magnetic field of a bar magnet points away from the North Pole. And so we could imagine a series of magnetic lines coming from the North End with arrowheads pointing away from the North Pole and toward the South Pole. If I move that magnet into this conducting coil, I am increasing the number of magnetic lines that point in the direction I'm moving. So this is the reason that when I move a magnet in and out of an electric coil, I see my meter change directions and show me electricity moving first in one direction and then in the other. Another way to look at Faraday's law. Okay, so there is a very important idea. The direction change when we move the magnets at a different direction. So how do we determine the direction? This is a very important question. So we are going to determine the direction of generate current. And this current uh, direction could be summarized by experiment. But the first guy that summarizes uh, uh, this uh, relation is called Lenz. So Lenz is a physicist. He and just summarized a law, Lenz's law. And oh, hold on, Lenz's law. And in the 1834. So in the 1834, and the physicist Lenz uh, summarized and the role of the direction of generated uh, generated current. So he said, and uh, the magnetic field, magnetic field, generated created by the induced current, created by induced current. Oppose the change of initial magnetic field. Okay, how do we understand this statement? If we have um, a coil or a solenoid. and we connect with a current meter and we have a magnet moving and the magnetic field increase in the solenoid if we're moving. So the magnetic field inside the solenoid increase when we use a magnet to approach the solenoid. Then in this case, the solenoid is going to generate a current and the current generated current will create a magnetic field. So the created magnetic field is going to oppose the change of the initial magnetic field. The change of initial magnetic field goes to the left because on the left it increases, right? So the initial magnetic field uh, on the left increases. So the change of the initial magnetic field is to the left. And the generated magnetic field is going to oppose this change. So the generated magnetic field just goes right. This is generated magnetic field. And this is the initial. Okay, so if the generated magnetic field goes right, I use the right hand row my thumb go to the right and my four fingers curl clockwise. So that means the current is clockwise. The current is in this way. So this is the generated current. So the same thing, if we just move the, uh, the magnet out of the solenoid, it move out of the solenoid is moving this way, 
is the speed of the magnet, then that means the magnetic field decreases. So if the magnetic decreases, the change of the magnetic field goes right. This is uh, the initial magnetic field and change goes right. Then the generated magnetic field should go to the left. So this is the generated magnetic field goes left. Then I use the right hand row, my thumb goes to the left, and my four fingers curl uh, counterclockwise. Then I will have another direction counterclockwise in the solenoid. So this is how we determine the direction of the current. So we have some practice in the mushroom physics. You are going to use that practice um, to help you understand how to use Lenz's law to determine the generator current. Do you have other questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's go back to the quiz. Uh, let me stop the sharing.